You know, I am something twisted and wrong. And that terrifies you. Today at the Rabbit's Den, we're going deep in the dark sinister mind of McFarlane Toys, Mortal Kombat 11, The Batman Who Laughs. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the Rabbit's Den. I'm your host Marco, aka Rabbit. Today, I have for you a figure so dark, so unique, that it was an instant must-buy to add to my ever-growing Batman figure collection. I have for you McFarlane Toys, the Batman Who Laughs. Now, I haven't really digged deep into the Batman Who Laughs storyline, but from what I know, in the DC world, there are dark universes and this particular Batman comes from the Earth's negative 22. It's pretty much in this world, Bruce Wayne, and this might be a little spoiler alert, Bruce Wayne actually killed the Joker, and by doing so, he released a gas that turned Bruce Wayne into practically the Joker himself. It's pretty much a hybrid of Batman and Joker together. It's Bruce Wayne's intelligence and physical strength, Combined with a Joker psychopathy, is that even a word? Psychopathy and sadistic sense of humor. Now with that said, let's get into this review. A quick look at the box first. Right on top we have Mortal Kombat 11 on top. On the bottom, the Batman Who Laughs. Right on top we have 14 Plus, says not a toy. On the other side we have the McFarlane logo. On this side we have Mortal Kombat 11. McFarlane logo on top. In the back, a generic picture of Scorpion from Mortal Kombat 11. 22 points of articulation, legal stuff. On the other side, we have Mortal Kombat MK on the side and the same picture of Scorpion. On the bottom, more legal stuff and the barcode if you guys need that. So that's a quick look at the box. And while we're at it, you see that I didn't take off the stand. So this figure does come with a stand that says Mortal Kombat right on it. So we're since we're on accessories, let's get on to the accessories first. He only came with one. And it's this sick looking sickle. Painted in silver. Pretty sharp, so be careful with it. On this tip also. So maybe that's why it has that um, 14 plus warning on it because of the sharp edges. But pretty simple. Um, painted pretty nice. Silver. It does have a different color for the bandage that's wrapped around on the handle. So those are the two accessories that he came with. The sickle and the stand. Now let's look at the figure. Now we have the figure here, looking at him, looking that face sculpt, he is pretty sick looking. I mean, look at those teeth and the added blood to it really adds to the effect of how sinister and evil this character is. Now, I don't think this is the first Batman Who Laughs figure that came out. But I do have the other ones, but this one I think is the best looking one for me. Now what's special about this figure and why it's under the Mortal Kombat um, figure line is because he is a playable character in the Mortal Kombat 11. But he's not a stand standalone character per se. He's actually a substitute skin. skin skin <laughs> skin for Nuob Saibot and funny enough little fun fact Nuob Saibot is actually the two creators the last names of the two creators of Mortal Kombat which is Ed Boon and John Tobias so a little fun fact for you guys but going back to this figure every detail on it I love 
this leather and this plastic, the way it's sculpted, look at all the textures that it has, makes it look like it's leather. Right in the back, it has these buckles painted in silver. Love that detail. And it goes forward back to the front that connects to the, uh, the rest of the buckles on the other side. Now on his face, he has this crown. Again, a bit sharp, so be careful when handling it. But I love every bit of it. Again, just look at those teeth. And also part of his face, you see this hood on him that just adds to the detail on his head sculpt. And of course, the bat horns, or bat ears, I should say, still depicting that he's Batman. I'm Batman. And again, that crown around covering his eyes makes him look very evil. Also, the shoulder pads. I love that extra addition to the sculpting. Sculpting. And I love the little break of color in here. It has, I don't know if it, it would show on camera, but it's purple. So it's a break from all the black that it has. And then going down to his chest, again, you know, kind of kind of like BDSM type clothing here. He has all these buckles right on his chest, you know, grabbing his entire body. Again, all the texture on the figure itself. He has this um, bracelet with, again, sharp... Um, edges on it so be careful on that one the color in the hand painted this grayish off-white color I guess you know to, to match the color of the Joker even though it's Bruce Wayne he has this molded chain on his left arm going down the pants pretty basic but it does have I'm not sure if you can see that. It does has this crisscross texture on the leg and on the midsection here. On his knee, he, he has this knee pads. That beautifully sculpted diamond, almost diamond-like shape. Going down his boots, again more belts. Surprisingly... They didn't paint any silver part on it, which is a bummer, but that could be easily added. And down his boots, pretty basic standard boots with laces on them, nicely sculpted. But yeah, and I love the way his, um, his robe or his coat is molded. I love this little cutouts in here the little lines on his back just adds to the full detail of it but yeah I love this figure great addition to the DC McFarlane line now let's check his articulation now starting with the articulation with the head and be careful with the spikes around his crown. Um, it is on a ball joint. So it pre pretty much can spin. Could go right, left, 360. Um, he can look up pretty far. But it's it stops right here because of the, col the collar. Looking down. He can look down far as well I believe it's because the neck peg is on a long ball joint so he he has all this space to move his head around on the shoulder he can pretty much do this T pose and what's cool and I've never seen this before I'm not sure if it, it would show on camera but it he does have this drop down feature 
on his shoulder. Which is um, the first time I've see, seeing it in any figure. So I like how McFarlane did that. Um, pretty much go forward. Go back. 360. Again. And you know part of that shoulder. He has this somewhat you know butterfly joint on it. So again great articulation on the arms. He has double jointed Elbows, rotation on the wrist, rotation on the bicep, um, there is a hinge on the wrist, going down on the torso, he does have a cut in there, but it's hindered by his um, coat, so you can't really do much in there. But there's a cut on the waist where, let's see here, you can pretty much twist it. And again, the ab crunch, you can go pretty low. Legs, pretty much the full split. He does, he does have that standard McFarlane hip joint, which we see on most of McFarlane. Um, no thigh cut, but he has a wide range moving forward, moving back that much, somewhat hindered by the coat, knee, double jointed, so good posing there, no boot cut. But on the ankles, he does have up and down, hindered by the top part of the boot. He has a little bit of rocker and twists. So yeah, great articulation in him. And you can pretty much do a lot of great poses. On him but yeah again great figure great sculpting great articulation now let's look at some size comparison now for size comparisons here he is with a few other McFarlane DC figures he's a Thomas Wayne Batman and next to a McFarlane Aquaman So pretty even in size across the board Here he is next to a Superboy Jonathan Kent and a Nightwing Again Typical McFarlane size seven inch line So he fits pretty well in all the McFarlane lines here he is next to a few G.I. Joe classified figures, a Python Patrol bat, and we have Outback in here. He is, again, McFarlane 7-inch, comparing it to the 6-inch Hasbros. Here he is next to a Black Series Paz Vizsla. So smaller in scale, but again, this is out of out of this world Batman, so we can make it work. Here he is next to a few Mythic Legion builders, skeleton, gladiator, and a Templar Knight. So Various in sizes with Mythic Legions, but he can fit in the world. A bit skinnier, but again, something that we can make it work. And lastly, some 112 Mezco Kriggs. Smaller, 
but they look great together. So that's it for size comparisons. There you have it folks, our close look at McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11, The Batman Who Laughs. Overall, this figure is just amazing to me. From its amazing head sculpt, from the molding of that teeth, with the added blood to it, and that crown on his head, everything about this is perfect. From his robe, his cloak, and the texture that they added to it just makes it look like it's real leather. All those belts, all those silver paint on it just adds to the overall look of this figure. And you can't beat it at the price point of $20. So this is a definitely must have for any Batman collector. How about you guys? What do you guys think of the Batman Who Laughs figure? Are you guys planning to get it for your Batman collection? And if you have any amazing information about this character, let me know in the comment section. I would love, love to know more about this character. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you do, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and make sure that you click on that notification bell to be notified for any future video reviews that I do. And in behalf of Batman Who Laughs, this is Rabbit, and I'll see you next time on The Rabbit's Den. Peace.